Welcome, bet riders around the world. My name is Gary Solomon, and you're watching the Laidback Bike Report. Well, happy 2021 to all you guys. It's so great to have you with us for a new year of Laid Back Bike Report webcasts. We are excited to share the uh, amazing folks we have with you for today's show. Let me tell you who they are. First of all, we'll be opening up with our pal Hansa Gala with uh, Recumbent News in 5. Then we're going to go to Serbia and uh, talk with Robert Stein uh, from Stein Trikes and talk about his Wild One trike and uh, the history of Stein Trikes. So we look forward to that. Uh, updating the Stein Trike story, we also have Janet Buckwalter with us, formerly working with uh, Ian Sims and, uh, and uh, now at Greenspeed. And, and of course, now she is going to be... Uh, Taking care of Stein trikes here in the USA. We'll talk to Janet about what she has in mind. Our retro futurist herself, Nina Paley, with us uh, again today to do uh, the Bicycle of the Future segment and, uh, and do a drawing as well. You'll see how that uh, works out here shortly. And lastly, uh, we're going to close out with a tribute uh, to our lost friend, Jackie Schlitter. Uh, so uh, we will finish up with that. All right, folks, let me introduce to you uh, our crew today on the Laid Back Bike Report. Here we go. Uh, first of all, down in Jackson, Mississippi, it is Trey Burgoyne. Hi, Trey. Howdy, folks. How's all? How is everybody? <laughs> everybody, apparently, except for you, is doing uh, fine. Trey, Trey is uh, handling the media and not the uh, not the audio today, so we're in good shape there. Uh, all the way over uh, in Alfred Station, New York, I believe it's Peter Stahl, the Bicycle Man. Hello, Peter. Hello. How y'all doing? Y'all. Good, good to have you Trey. with us. Uh, all right, let's see. Let's go to the Czech Republic and uh, have a look at our pal Hansa Gala, our news director. Hello, Hansa. Hello, nice to be here with you. It's great to have you with us. And down in Florida, our uh, sports uh, director is Denny Voorhees. Hi, Denny. Hey, how you doing? We're back in Florida. It's beautiful. Uh, a little overcast today, but we got out for a ride. Lovely to be here. All right, good to have you with us. And in Big D, Dallas, Texas, Mr. Wizard, it's Doug Davis. Hi, Doug. And when we say y'all down here, y'all say something else there in New York. That's probably true. Well, let's get into that later, <laughs> shall we? All right, and uh, finally, uh, we have uh, Nina Paley with us again today. Hi, Nina. Howdy. It's, uh, it's snowing here. It's here. Look at this. There it is, right out Nina's uh, window. Yeah. There, Nina, Nina, you're gonna do you're gonna do a you're gonna do a drawing for us today, I believe. Can you give us an idea what you got in mind? Yes, I'm doing a hundred dollar drawing. Uh, the commissioner gets two words, and Bob's two words are First Amendment. So I will be drawing First Amendment today. All right, folks, that's great, Nina. We're excited to have you do that. So Nina will be working on that during the show, and uh, we will reveal that, I guess, during her segment a little bit later on in the show, and we might uh, occasionally pop back in and have a look at her doing the drawing. So guys, thank you so much for helping out uh, today, and uh, yep, we will see you all later. Let's move along, and let me tell you about uh, participating in the live chat. I hope you guys will do that. Uh, the live chat uh, on YouTube or on Facebook. You can comment on Facebook and YouTube has a live chat right next to usually on the side over there or below on mobile. So make sure that you uh, take advantage of the live chat, ask questions uh, of our guests or of any of our panelists or just chat among yourselves. So um, somebody's not muted, guys. We just check your mute and make sure you're all muted. All right. Now, if you could, to support the laid back bike report, I'd appreciate it if you would like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, 
and uh, click that little white eye right up there. You'll get more information uh, at our website, laidbackbackreport.com and uh, find out about future shows. You can go find all our past shows. Everything is right there. And lastly, if you could become a Patreon, uh, you can see all of our patrons are right here. We pop them up on the screen. We just got another one uh, just yesterday. So thank you for supporting us. You could do that for as little as a dollar a month on Patreon. All right. Also supporting us, of course, are our amazing sponsors. Let me tell you a little about them. First of all, it is TerraCycle, makers of exquisite recumbent parts and accessories for your bent. And Trailside Trikes, a fine recumbent trike shop on the Withlacoochee Trail in Florida and now in Knoxville, Tennessee as well. And Cruise Bike, designed for the cyclist who wants to ride farther, climb faster, and adventure more. All cruise bikes and frame sets ship free in the USA. And TerraTrike Green Speed, the best in leisure, performance, adventure, touring, electric, and portability. Wherever your adventure leads, TerraTrike will take you there. And Green Speed is Ian Sims' design, and it brings you performance through science and engineering. And we welcome two new sponsors for 2021 on the Laidback Bike Report. We're very excited to have Mickey and Laidback Cycles. They're California's premier recumbent trike shop. And uh, we give you the freedom to ride is their motto. And also recumbent CycleCon. Please join us at the 2021 recumbent CycleCon trade show and convention, which will be held October 9th and 10th at the Montgomery County Fairgrounds in Dayton, Ohio. More information at recumbentcyclecon.com. All right, guys, let's move along and get right into the show. We're going to take it out to uh, Hansa. Are you there? Here. Good, good. <laughs> now we got you up there. All right, Hansa, it's good to have you with us in the new year. What do you have going on in the news? Hello, everybody. I have free news for you today. Uh, the first one is that the Terra Trike introduced their new model, the ROG, which is uh, an interesting uh, small tadpole trike with uh, NVOLO stepless uh, gear hub in the back. Uh, the, the advantage of the NVOLO is, is that you do not need to shift uh, one gear by another gear, but you just move with the grip shift and it, you choose the, the whatever uh, a gear you want basically or a place to uh to shift uh i especially like the enviolo for uh being paired with uh, with an electric engine uh, so you can also uh choose this model or, or retrofit it with the with the bosch motor and have a perfect uh, electric trike uh, I think it's it it starts uh, it it is priced at uh, sixteen hundred uh, US dollars, and uh, at the moment it's uh, back ordered, so you can you can pre order it. Um, another news is uh, that Cruise Bike finally shown uh, photos uh, of their new model. Let's wait for the picture of the Cruise Bike. Yes, the new model, the Q45, uh, they were uh, showing some uh, te teasers, some uh, little detailed pictures uh, ahead, but here is the final final photo. It's a, a new evolution of their, uh, of their very popular best-selling model, the Q45. Uh, this model has a few a uh, few or this evolution has few uh, news it's the it uses uh, 650 c wheels uh, through axle uh, through axles on front and uh, the rear wheel one by 11 gearing i think some uh, changes to uh, to handlebars and it also comes in three different colors neon colors the high visibility colors so it's this one you see here the yellow one and then they have 
blue and orange, I think. The price is uh, 2900 uh, and again, it's uh, you can pre-order it. It will ship in February, according to last information, I think. And uh, the final information, the, the final news is this uh, magazine, the EU Supino. Uh, it's a third. It is a third issue, basically. They uh, and it's a magazine, not really an online. It's a digital magazine you can download in PDF for free. It is a magazine from European Human Powered Vehicle Association. Uh, kind of summary of a lot of different articles uh, which uh, have been published in different uh, magazines uh, of different uh, European uh, associations uh, and you can you can download it for free. I like uh, the content because it's full of uh, very good articles mostly about velomobiles uh, this time but with quite some info about two wheelers and trikes as well we will s give you a link to that magazine somewhere in the in the chat or in the comments later great Hansi. yeah you know el sapino i love it uh, this is like well they were a print magazine for a while then they kind of went electronic two or three issues ago something like that i think I think there are uh, there is the Ligfits, uh, Ligfitsen, uh which was printed uh, many uh, some years ago. Also, the Info Bull from the German Association and Swiss Association was or is printed. I'm not sure exactly, but from what I understand, this EU subpoena is just the PDF version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really well done. I haven't read this uh, this per this latest issue, but I've I've read the previous ones and it's great. So, all right, Hansa, thank you so much. Uh, great news. You're going to stick around, and we'll see you a little bit later on in the show. I know. So, thanks for the news. We appreciate yeah. it. Thank you too. Uh, sure. All right, folks. Well, you might have seen some of the comments that I put up during the uh, news that our next and major guest uh, is uh, Stein Trikes from Serbia. So uh, let's bring uh, Robert and Victor up if we can. There we go. Hi, guys. Uh, there Hello. we go. So uh, for your information, since we have two people on the screen, that would be Victor on the left and Robert Stein on the right. Uh, Victor is a business partner of Robert and uh, Robert is the founder uh, of uh, Stein Trikes. And uh, we're going to talk with these guys today and learn more about uh, Stein Trikes and uh, its history and what they produce today. They've got a lot of fans that are watching today, obviously, already. So Let's jump right into it, uh, guys. We're glad to have you with us today. Robert, can you tell us the story of how you got into the trike business? Well, uh, hello to everyone. First of all, uh, Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, I basically started with my father saying, no, you cannot have a motorcycle. Then I went for a bicycle. So it was basically a very simple thing. And then after 20 years of bicycling, the pain was tremendous and it was enough. I tried the tricycle and that's it. Very simple. Uh, okay. This well, <laughs> Robert, I know there's a story. Uh, if we can go back, yeah, I know there was a story of you getting into uh, uh, trying to put some treks together with a uh, a bike uh, manufacturer there locally. Can you tell us that briefly? Because that's an interesting story. Uh, the first order that came from uh, United Kingdom was basically paid for, and I uh, made an agreement with a bicycle local bicycle factory here. And uh, when the delivery time came, uh, they just failed to deliver. So I said, okay, you better learn the welding. And uh, that's, uh, that was basically an, uh, a situation that, that I have to deliver uh, without uh, thinking that uh, production may require much more than I am able to build or, or do, 
but uh, it ended up well. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, basically, this is what gave you the impetus to start doing it all on your own is the way that I understood it. So, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at that first slide again with uh, you on that trike. And let's, if we can, go through the history, the early and uh, and then bring our uh, early history and then we'll bring ourselves up to date. Uh, so, we're going to talk about some early prototypes and how you got started. So, uh, Robert, I'm going to let you uh, take control of the slides. You tell Trey when you want to go to the next one. And Victor, if you need to chime in at any point, please just go ahead and jump in and do that. So go ahead. Yeah, this is the first, uh, very first prototype I built uh, where I tested my ideas and the things I learned over the Internet because there was no other literature that I could uh, find in, in a printed form. So you can go basically to the next slide slowly. And uh, on the in the left top corner, there's Victor trying the same trike. And uh, the other images show uh, the road chart, which was basically built on, on the idea of the uh, and the knowledge that I gained with the first prototype. And these are uh, the first road sharks, the first time trikes that, that hit the market ever. So you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, this image was made by a journalist who caught me on the street looking at the odd contraption riding uh, around the town. So they made an article with me in the newspaper. So you can go on. You, you just, oh, this is the first wiper. Uh, this already had uh, in the uh, uh, cross-link steering, like on green speed, and this was the first wiper that came to U the United States back in 2001. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the development uh, from wiper, which was uh, a rigid frame. Uh, we built uh, the first suspended trike. It had a uh, suspension on the rear wheel and this uh, customer was from Canada so we expanded our market not just to the, the United States uh, United Kingdom but uh, we went for Canada as well next slide please uh, this was uh, this is a uh, mud I think uh, Lars Wipke yeah, so uh, this is a slide that when we were going through your pictures, uh, Robert, I was taken by this one because we know this guy. This is Lars. Yeah, he's the Swedish uh, gentleman who ended up creating the original carbon trike and then eventually worked with uh, Bichetta to create the uh, the, the CT 2.0, the carbon trike 2.0 now. So this is an early shot of him on one of your trikes, yes? Nomad, yeah. That was Nomad. Sent. So we basically, in, in a very uh, short time, we managed to get our trikes to many countries, which was surprising because locally no one was interested or, or you know, uh, nobody knew what the hell this was. So right. I was delighted to see that people are basically happy with what we built. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, in, in the early stages, we already uh, found out that uh, some of the existing mesh seat uh, solutions are not the best for everyone. So we developed our first uh, hard shell seats and we made them from glass fiber and carbon as well. This is one of the earliest uh, iterations, models that, that we built at the time in 2002. Next slide. Uh, this is the road shark in its later uh, development stage. And uh, then we started sending them to Austria and Germany as well. You can go with the slide then. Uh, this is one of the images showing at the beginning uh, our modular concept because it was easier to build a well-designed steering and uh, ha we, we tested the handling and the steering and we decided uh, to simplify it to cut down the cost of, of the manufacturing 
uh, of development by adding a different rear end. So we had one front end and just plugged in the rear end, which was compatible with, with the rest of it. And we got three different models based on the same idea. And these were all working well. Next slide, please. Wait a little bit. Uh, just, just a second. Not only uh, that we want to make three models, but we wanted to add solution to the customers <laughs> that uh, in any time they can change the their trike from the 20 inch rear back to suspended or to 26 rear wheel. So it was uh, also option for them to in any time in future change their trike to another model. So not only manufacturing flexibility, but flexibility for the customer to be able to make changes later on if, if their needs changed or whatever. That's a great idea. Exactly. Yeah, and that was cutting the cost down because they didn't have to buy another trike, but just the rear end and we would support it. Okay. All right, let's move along to the next one. Oh, this is uh, one of the uh, fine examples of our custom jobs because uh, many people had uh, special needs and this tricycle is one of those which was supposed to fit in a, a travel bag so it can be disassembled and taken to an airport and fit into the personal luggage. This one went to Sweden. Okay, then next slide, please. Uh, this is the image of uh, the first uh, Viper that got a printed review in the Bellavision by Peter Elland. Uh, I think that was, yeah, 2003. Next slide, please. Uh, this was uh, our first meeting with, oh, basically the only meeting with uh, uh, my dear friend Ian Sims on uh, Spezi in 2004. And uh, I, I got the feeling that he liked our tricycles and uh, later I heard that he wanted to develop something like that with suspension, but I guess that he never got the chance to finish his ideas about the suspension. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the later stage of the Nomad uh, with a different solution for the suspension, which was uh, basically a middle step from the later uh, solution. Next slide. Uh, back in 2004, we had built the first tandem, the Magnum, and we changed it in the meantime to make it better, but this was uh, good enough for uh, the start, and uh, it had uh, great handling, and it didn't uh, need a turning circle like a boss, which many uh, tandem trikes usually need. Next slide, please. Uh, this is also the Nomad, but uh, showing our custom-made mudguards, or fenders as you call them, which we uh, made uh, also in our house. Next slide. Uh, in 2004, we uh, had a review by Brian Ball, and this is the Viper that got that review. Uh, also delivered in uh, to Brian in Germany uh, uh, because he was also visiting the uh, fair. Next slide. This is the Road Shark in its uh, final version in 2005, and uh, it's basically the last series of unsuspended tricycles we built before we developed the suspended trikes. Oops. Next slide. Uh, this was the city uh, built for people who are not concerned about speed, but about comfort and uh, easy uh, sitting into the tricycle, getting up from the tricycle for uh, parents with young children or somebody who just wants to go shopping behind the corner or to the next store. Next slide. This is the same tricycle. Uh, in use and uh, it's stable, wide, 
but uh, the market simply didn't want was I, I don't know if the market wasn't ready for this tricycle now I see lately many manufacturers build tricycle like these and they have a market now next slide uh, in 2006 we presented our first full suspended tricycle and this is the image of it on the Spezi on the race uh, written by uh, Fabian Jesse uh, who was uh, a racer for the Zox team but they built just bicycles I think okay next slide uh, during these years we were working on many prototypes and this is one of the bicycle prototypes which can, could be used as a front wheel drive rear wheel drive or a combined full wheel drive but we never got to do to product to make it uh, as a production model but it was also built on the modular concept because the rear end was basically the same rear end we use on our tricycles next slide this is the the speedster yeah yes <clears throat> this this was the speedster the bicycle which had uh, sus full suspension and a monofork in the front uh, also based on the modular concept the yeah. same rear end was used as uh, on the our trikes you can put the next slide on please and this was uh, the prototype stage, the first mock-up of our full suspended tricycle, which was later developed into the Mad Max. This was just a few tubes and testing the idea in the workshop. Next slide. Uh, all of our trikes, regardless of the, of the fact that are they suspended or not, were rugged, strong and uh, durable and reliable this is one of the images showing uh, uh, the same fabian on on, on the race on spezi uh, next image uh, this is a snippet from the article in the velovision uh, yeah velovision uh, about that mad max which was uh, competing on the race on the spezi next slide uh, this is the same tricycle in the, in the its natural environment off road. Uh, we developed about uh, three inches of suspension on this model, which was later increased on the on the new wild one to four inches. And I think that maybe I'm not modest enough, but I think that's the best full suspended tricycle on the market today. Next and one. interestingly enough, Robert, we just got a question from uh, Kostub Heblikar just in time to have you have mentioned. So it was three inches of suspension on this uh, early trike, but these days you have four inches of suspension. Is that, do I have you correct? We increased that three inches to four with a different concept and the dis different design of this uh, wishbones. And uh, we are using basically the maximum possible suspension travel with these dimensions of the of the swing arms okay and we'll get to see some of that here as we progress but that's uh, that's great okay let's go ahead uh in 2007 our partner from austria the main distributor for unite uh european union uh, primarily for for the german speaking market segment uh thomas seide uh, opened his premises uh, with this workshop and this is the image of the, his uh, shop uh, before the opening. And I might say that uh, I met uh, Thomas Ida at uh, Spetsi uh, a, a couple of years ago, and uh, the uh, thumbnail, the picture that, uh, uh, that shows this video that you guys probably saw before you clicked on it, to watch and the one that will stay with this video is a picture of uh, Thomas uh, jumping uh, the wild one, the fat version uh, down the stairs at, uh, at uh, Spetsi as well. So this is the beginning of your, uh, your uh, association with Thomas then. We started working with him in 2004 and uh, he had his uh, 
past as, as an avid mountain biker uh, and uh, a little bit an adrenaline junkie, which helped us uh, tremendously because uh, we got a person who is brave and silly enough to do the impossible things. Uh, and uh, if somebody needs to break the, the, the frame, then it would be better to do it uh, in controlled environment and not to sell a tricycle that will break uh, at the customers. Uh, it, so we don't want the, the tricycle to fail uh, with the customer. Yeah, but I got to say, from my uh, from my experience with uh, Thomas Sida, he is the Chuck Yeager, the test pilot of of trikes. Yeah, and uh, uh, every time we we had a new idea that was developed uh, enough, uh, we built a tricycle, sent one to him, and then give him some time so he can uh, break it if it's possible once he said it's not possible to break this down we can start the production then we were okay very good all right let's get down back to the slideshow if we can uh one of the things that uh, thomas suggested that we should do uh was this thunderstorm uh, which was a velomobile that was uh, possible to build up from the existing Mad Max tricycle. So this was not uh, a usual, uh, the, the normal standard Velomobile that, that's uh, common on the market, but uh, a, a, an upgrade possibility for people who wanted to buy a, mo a Velomobile for the, for the cold days, but uh, wanted to have a tricycle which doesn't have the fairing over the nice hot summer days. Next slide. Uh, the later development uh, from Mad Max, we went to Mongoose or Mungo, uh, which was a very popular tricycle with a little bit more suspension travel than Mad Max because it was wider and for people who are a, a little bit bigger in body because I'm relatively thin, about 110 pounds maybe. And uh, people who are twice my, of my size just uh, don't fit in the, into the small tricycle. Next slide. Uh, at, at the time, we tried to make a conversion for people who are disabled or just uh, wanted to use uh, their hands, so we started building our first hand trike, which was based on the mongoose. And uh, uh, ever since, we are developing better and better hand trikes as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, among uh, many custom jobs we did, this was one of a uh, kind, a quad. It was two-wheel drive with a differential for training uh, the dogs in the summertime uh, because uh, dogs who pull the sleds over the winter need training in the summertime as well. So we built one and I think the customer is still happy with it. Next slide. This is a detail from the Mongoose or Mungo Sport. Uh, in Europe, uh, showing the detail of the front suspension, which we had at the time. Next slide. In 2012, uh, we developed the current uh, model, our best seller, the wild one. And this is uh, the wild one mm, prototype, which we called the edge at the time, and it got a review on the Bench Rider online as well. Next slide. Uh, this is uh, a sportier iteration of the prototype in a different color. And uh, this gave us uh, enough experience so we can build a better tricycle, which we build today. Next slide. And these are the three uh, base models of the Wild One 
on the same image or with the engine with the power pedal assist big wheel small wheel with the rack or without next slide uh this is also the wild one but with uh, a bigger 26 inch wheel in the back uh, next slide and this is uh, also yeah that's the same tricycle in a different color because we do um, many uh, custom colors uh, depending on customers wishes so they can pick much more uh color combinations than with the other manufacturers. Next slide. In 2014, we developed uh, a leaning tricycle, which was later called a wild wave. But uh, for some reason, some people didn't find it uh, stable enough. Trey, uh, you can go through. There's like five or six of these uh, as Robert talks. This is, I, if I could interrupt for just a second, Robert. So, as most of our viewers know, last month uh, we had uh, Dave on talking about his the lost recumbent, which was a tilting trike that he is rebuilding uh, now and putting together. And then I was fascinated to see that you had uh, put something together in 2014. So. Uh, Robert, yeah, if you would, even though it was kind of a prototype that never really took off, it's still an interesting concept. So as we go through these next four or five pictures, if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about your ideas about this design and what became of it. Uh, the idea was uh, to have a tricycle that has some sort of infinite suspension travel because uh, uh, with this concept, we got a tricycle that was not just fully suspended, but also was leaning and uh, the bicycle wheels are basically not uh, designed to cope with the lateral forces and the uh, sliding. sliding. Uh, also, the tires are not designed for rubbing aside when you slide with a uh, tricycle that is not designed to lean as a bicycle. Then you have uh, multiple level of problems and a leaning tricycle can solve that. And the idea came uh, exactly based on these facts. The leaning trike had basically like 25, 30 inches of suspension travel effectively, but it was also leaning in the curves so you could uh, go faster uh, in the corners without uh, uh, risking that, that you will slide off the road. And uh, yeah, that's a very extreme angle. Look at that. Yeah, it, it, it could uh, lean up to 45 degrees, but uh, obviously we didn't get uh, that kind of, uh, but, uh, Many people uh, obviously didn't have any previous experience with the recumbent bicycles. And uh, for that reason, we were hitting the wrong market or the targeted. Uh, I, I'm not sure what really happened, but for now, this, this uh, concept is on hold, but we are working in the background to find a solution that would be uh, that, that will provide that feel uh, feeling of uh, security for those people who are not so uh, I don't know how how to put this. Yeah, they might be willing to uh, those that have more experience with uh, with trikes, recumbent trikes in general, and then might be willing to take the next step and try a, a leaning trike. So uh, we talked about this uh, briefly, Robert, when I was asking you about this trike, uh, Bill McBride is asking about how it locks. So um, so to, to keep it upright and to lock it, there's that mechanism. Trey, if you see the uh, the rectangular red piece of metal with the bolts in it there, there was a there was a picture that was a little bit, yeah, there was a picture that was a little bit closer, closer up of that. And Ro Robert, could you talk a little bit? Of, that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, any of those. Just a, yeah, yeah the, there you go. Uh, the idea was that the caliper 
will hold the tricycle in its upright position and that you can ride it as a normal tricycle but obviously the grip on on the on the uh, brake pads was not sufficient so we uh, the design of, of the tricycle for the future will by all means have a single point locking device which is basically developed but uh, not ready for production yet and it will be possible to lock it in upright position and only in upright position so it uh, this mechanism allowed the tricycle to be locked up in the wrong position which was uh, basically uh, defined as dangerous okay so All right. some just decided not to support the product but and that's the uh, those are the levers that lock it uh, yeah those are the is that what the one lever is the lever that locks the uh, position was a parking brake for the rear wheel okay okay let's go ahead and get through these then and on to the next one thank you that that's it's really fascinating we'll see what becomes of that later on all right what about this what do we got in velovision here this was an article in velo uh, i think uh, velovision yeah and uh, a short article uh showing thomas uh jumping on the tricycle i never saw any other manufacturer or dealer jumping on the tricycle being so sure of, of its capability to withstand that kind of maltreatment so we are uh, absolutely sure that if you're using a tricycle within yeah, let's say reasonable you know uh if, if you're uh, insane or no what's the term if you're not crazy enough you will not break it ever <laughs> okay so, so sorry that he's jumping on the tricycle okay and you had mentioned uh, a couple of earlier reviews that uh, brian ball did on bent rider and this is uh, uh i i took the screenshot from the most recent one which was uh, 2015 huh yeah this is one of those article you should read and uh, as as i like to joke about it this was our third rough around the edges review because <laughs> uh, uh, as much he likes those strikes he always ends up with rough around the edges i think we, we passed that level so uh, in the near future we have to talk with brian so he can make an, uh, a review of our tricycle omitting that rough around the edges thing. Or, or Larry Varney, who is actually on live chat uh, with us. And, uh, you know, I, I put this up a little earlier. Here's what Larry says. He'd love to ride something like that. So, Larry, maybe uh, maybe Robert will work something out with you to, to do a review on that. So, He, he should uh, either contact us or Janet. Uh, and... Uh, we can sort that out all right sounds great all right let's move along here uh this is one shining example of uh how uh, rugged our trikes are because this was one solar uh, panel equipped tricycle which went from turkey to france and uh, never had a single problem with that next slide this is the later uh, version of the uh, leaning tricycle so we can basically skip these a bit just now this is uh, our ultimate off-road machine the wild one fat which is now getting a new name uh, four by four four inches of suspension travel with four combined with four inch tires so okay. there is uh, in, in probably going in this direction everybody is going for fats so here we are with our model next slide please uh development was uh, always in uh the base of every our trike this is one of our uh let's say innovation i i don't thing that anyone did this integrated lightning in the sea increases the visibility the safety and uh, adds no uh, additional 
complexity to the tricycle so the user can just pop the lights on or off and this was victor responsible for this yes uh, he he is the electronics guy in the company all right these are our try the new delay oh, i think these these are the latest ones yes the latest yeah the, before the snow was this year <laughs> yeah so it was mislabeled like 2018, but never mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the and, the, and the standard wild one. And this is how the, the LED lights look in the seat. This was shot uh, on Spezi, but we never got to push this enough. So probably if, if we got proper feedback from people, then we might consider uh, this as a regular offer. In, with, with our tricycles. Yes, that was uh, LED lights uh, laminated into the seat. So integrated part of the seat, not uh, sticked on the seat. And we also developed the uh, mudguards uh, with uh, lights, uh, integrated lights in the front and the back of the mudguard. In front uh, was the white uh, lightning and yeah. uh, in the rear red and the plan was uh, in future we have signalization for steering uh, with amber lights also so but those are leds we're looking at right there that are built into the mud guards yes yes very uh, nice the project is also on hold <laughs> we don't have uh, enough time for all projects we we have of course but this thing is that it can be retro, uh, retrofitted on existing tricycles so our customers that already have our trikes uh, if we get the, the time and the money to develop this further and uh, to get it into production then they will be uh, it will be possible to buy the seat and retrofit it to the existing tricycle oh, back to the slideshow mm -hmm. and uh, of course uh, not everyone is keen to ride off-road uh, and this is a shiny example of how uh, the same tricycle can be uh, set up for uh, road use and to be fast it's not the lightest there are lighter tricycles but you still have the suspension and just uh, change the tires and you can go off-road anytime next slide uh, meanwhile while we were uh, working with uh, the wider tricycles uh eaton davis there is yeah davis. eaton davis uh who is our dealer in uh maine that's uh, yeah, the eastern coast uh he Down, uh, arundel arundel oh, arundel yes yeah, yeah. In near Boston, uh, he asked us if it, if if it's possible to make a narrower trike. So we're back to the original narrower design, and uh, is it possible to do it with the wild one? So uh, anyone who doesn't need a wild uh, white tricycle uh, or wants to put a fairing on it and create uh, some sort of velomobile uh, that we can build a kit. Could we build a tricycle that's that's coming with a narrower track so we develop the wild one narrow track which will soon get uh, our already used name of speedster it's lighter smaller and uh, if there is a market for it uh, we already have it in production so it's on our new website uh, one of the things that uh, I noticed and uh, talked with people, uh, I often see people getting into their 70s and then they start riding a tricycle. Uh, and we thought, why do not, uh, why don't people use the tricycles when they're 35? So we uh, started uh, pushing that idea with the younger couples with kids and uh, it obviously works because we found a couple who was willing to help us out uh, showing 
their adventures on trikes and uh, they have also some uh, YouTube videos. Uh, so we are promoting our tricycles, not just for old people, not just for adrenaline junkies, not for uh, off-roading exclusively or racing, but for uh, touring with kids, with luggage. So it's, it's a very versatile uh, design, which allows uh, multiple ways of using without any uh, changes to the basic design. Next slide. Uh, this is one of our later models uh, with uh, 12 speed drivetrain in uh, gold color, uh, special equipment, and these are somewhat lighter and uh, customers can pick uh, equipment and um, I, I'm not sure what can I tell you more because uh, first you have to try it and if you try it you will buy it yes but not only equipment you can uh, choose the color colors uh, of the rims of the hubs uh, of the springs uh, you you like and uh, also if you if you wish you can uh, choose uh, every part of the track to be in different color or simply uh, one color frame with uh, only one part in, in right you guys are kind of known for having multiple colors on your frames this is not a good example on this picture but many of the other ones very bright uh, colors in in various combinations so that's an important thing victor thank you for sharing that and then i think that's going to conclude this part of uh, the history which brings us up to date there's a current uh, Wild one right there. Now, I know that uh, our uh, viewers uh, are interested not only in the trikes that you make, but how you make them and where you make them. So I was wondering if you fellas might take us on a tour of the shop. Would that be possible? Yes, of course. We are now on holidays, uh, so the shop is uh, empty right now, but uh, I will make you uh, live tour through the shop. Let's take a look at the shop right now. And then as you get that going, I'll tell my uh, viewers that we, uh, uh, you guys actually do have a nice video, which we'll show afterwards, which show some of the folks working in the shop. So uh, we'll be able to see how that goes on, but we will, uh, we'll take a little tour now. Uh, let's take a quick look at the, um, at the chat and see if we've got anything here. We've had a, quite a few, um, Yes, there's Dan Runner. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. And Peter, Peter wishes he'd discovered him 30. So I think that was when Robert was talking about being 35 years old and riding trikes. Yeah, that's a regret I have myself. And uh, hello, Julie and uh, Mark Lovegrove. Uh, always a pleasure to have you watching with us. I'm glad you learned something there. And... Well, yeah, there's Ed. Yeah, uh, Robert. Yeah, I have an idea what Ed uh, is thinking about an idea, probably some sort of canopy. Yeah, it type it. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's um, let's have a look here. Now, Victor is taking us around. Robert, you want to describe as we go? This is the machining uh, room. Uh, these are universal machines. Uh, we don't have the latest technology. Of course, these are all manually guided machines and we have a better control over these things because most of our work is actually custom job and these are precise enough and uh, we can do uh, basically everything we need this is the mill and uh, that blue one is our uh, press we made ourselves and the drilling machine uh, the part uh, that we cannot show in, in uh, the workshop is the laser cutting uh, machine, which is in a different company, but uh, what, whatever we order or design, we can get it. Uh, this is, these are the welding machines, which are pretty modern, uh, the synergic, and uh, it's basically computerized, almost the latest technology. 
the working tables are uh, German made, very precise. Uh, and basically all the welding is done on these tables and with these machines. These are the examples of the pieces we built. And we have a grinding machine with different radiuses we can uh, instead of notching the, en the ends of the tubes, we grind them off. It's, uh, it looks pretty much primitive, but basically it does the job. Uh, these are the finished pieces which come from our workshop uh, in the assembly process. And uh, the powder coating uh, room with the colors, we have the Gemma system with uh, five filters. So it's uh, healthy. It doesn't, uh, oh, it's stuck on my tongue. Doesn't pollute. So all the waste or the excess paint is never used. So we don't recycle the paint. And this is the powder coating machine. I'm not sure how interesting is this to the average viewer, but okay. I'm thinking it's very interesting. I'm finding it fascinating to see how it's done. I know most of our viewers do like to, to see that uh, sort of thing. We, these are uh, the samples and we prime all the pieces that are built. We uh, protect them with the, with the uh, Coro primer, which uh, uh, is uh, preventing the, the uh, oxygen from uh, working on on the steel tubes so they uh, don't corrode they don't trust because uh, the primer is uh, locking up the, the oxygen from the air or the uh, atmosphere so they don't trust uh, they are uh, permanently protected Use multicolors for good. Ah, oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm reading these. This is a hand bending machine, and we have uh, other premises where we have other machines as well. But it's dark now outside, so uh, and the Wi-Fi is probably not going to. <laughs> it looks terrific, actually. Uh, this is wonderful, and uh, you can see all of our viewers uh, disagreed with you, Robert, that it's boring. They're all they're all really enjoying this, so. They would probably find it boring if they spend 10 or, or 12 hours a day here. <laughs> That's true. That may be. Yes, they're all finding it interesting. Oh. So, and there's Marco, the guy that's running the uh, beautiful video there. So, And back to the office. So, All right. Um, and here's uh, Michael Smith says, sometimes less technology is a better way to build, which I think is part of what you believe, uh, Robert. So... Um, oh. Oh, so there's a wild one right there on the floor. Yeah, this is one of our trikes that, that's built up. And we uh, use it often as a demo tricycle for uh, people who come to visit us. And uh, you can see some of the details of the suspension. If anyone has a question or you. Maybe. We have some questions, actually. Um, so are we pretty much done here at the... With the tour, is that it? Yeah, basically yes, because this is a small workshop, not many that's, people working yeah, here. Yeah. No, no, that's fine. And uh, great job, uh, Victor, great job taking us around to very smooth. I don't know if you have a gimbal, but boy, that's nice and smooth. Let's, uh, at this point, maybe, uh, Robert, let's go to uh, the, the video that you have of the manufacturing uh that you guys do and uh, i'm gonna ask you if you we can go through a few questions and uh, i'll have a couple questions myself so larry go ahead and start the video and uh, i'll ask robert as we go here um you don't have to this will be just video of what you guys saw in, in the shop as we go uh, one of the things that i wanted to know about you mentioned that you uh you work in steel uh why steel and not aluminum robert uh our uh basic idea was uh, to build a, a tricycle that can be repaired anywhere in the world. Many people buy our tricycles not just for uh, riding around the neighborhood, 
but they uh, take the, our tricycles to uh, trips that are 10,000 miles long. And if they find themselves, uh, you know, as they say, behind God's back, because God is not looking there, uh, the chance that if you have a problem with an aluminum, uh, the aluminum, aluminum <laughs> uh, frame, if it breaks, uh, you don't have many chances, uh, good chances that somebody will have a welding equipment to fix it. But with steel, uh, steel welding machines are cheap. And uh, you can fix your steel tricycle in any village where there's some kind of electricity, even if it's a generator, and you can continue your trip. Uh, if you have a serious problem with the aluminum frame, then you're stuck. Then you have to wait for the spare part to arrive to, I don't know, somewhere in Asia or India or South Africa. Uh, and that, that can take a lot of time. The steel is more forgiving. It is softer. It, uh, it, it is flexing a little bit more. Is it 4130 here? Costume's asking uh, AIS, AISI steel 4130. Is it a good material to build with? Do you feel it's, comfortable building? It is, but it's uh, very hard to work with. So I don't rec uh, recommend it for a home builder unless he has good welding equipment. And uh, it's hard to work with. So. Okay requires a little bit better equipment to work with. All right. Let's go through some questions from uh, other questions here. Uh, we saw the uh, the Velomobile shell that you had. Uh, Marco Ropers from uh, the Netherlands. Didn't Steintrike offer the Lytra? Uh, actually, that was a modified version of the Lytra with the uh, suspension on the rear wheel with the uh, uh, classical spring shocks not the leaf uh springs which w was uh, the part of the original design so we tried to build them and uh, it wasn't bad but uh, i'm not sure what happened that didn't end up with us building the, the lytra uh, someone else took over it and uh, i think mr rasmussen was not delighted with the idea Okay. All right. Bill McBride, McBride wants to know, can I buy a Wild Run 1 front end for my older Mungo? Well, actually, yes. Actually, yes. Yeah. There you go, Bill. So, yeah. he, he can talk to Janet. I think Bill's in Texas. He can talk to Janet about that and maybe get it arranged then, huh? Yeah. It's still based on the modular concept. So yeah. Okay. Uh, here was a question from David Lowe. What is the boom angle in percentage? You know what the boom angle is? Uh, in degrees, probably 24. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what he meant. Uh, I'm not sure I know what this is. Maybe you do. Um, do you, what is the motion ratio for the suspension? Do you know what that is? Yeah, I know, but, uh, I don't know it. It depends on the on the rear stay, and uh, it's a progressive suspension design. It's unique on the market because our uh, the the average or or the the most common solution is that the top uh, top end of the suspension uh, suspension element is locked to the sh uh, to the frame. Our suspension is not locked to the frame, but it's moving away. As, as it gets pushed from down, it uh, the, the upper side, the other end, is not locked on the frame. It moves. So it, it's a variable. So it's a progressive system. It's not locked like the, the uh, most common solution with the wishbone suspension. All right. And you talked about the ruggedness uh, and the robustness of your trikes. Nancy Whitehill wants to know, what is the warranty? If it's our mistake, lifetime. Okay. So if we make a mistake and it's a, it, it's a, uh, if the tricycle fails because we made a mistake, then it's a lifetime. 
Very good. So if a truck crushes it, then I have to say I'm sorry. Or the truck I, wasn't your fault. Uh, that, that Bill fun. says thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, uh, Bill. Good to see localism in action. Yep, you guys do it all right there. And uh, yes, I, I think it's very clear how you, how much you guys really care about the work that you do. And um, Michael asks, could you use a quick release on the wheels? Do yeah. you have? Yeah. yeah, it's possible, but we prefer not to do that because, you know, how often do you take off your wheels? And you can take a small Allen key in your back pocket and undo it. Okay, let's uh, let's move along here and uh, kind of uh, finish up with a couple of questions about the design that I had. Um, and you've talked about your customers, and uh, but maybe not how important they are to you and how they figure in on updates and changes. How does that work? What's that process, Robert, about listening to your customers and making changes to your designs? We usually start with our own ideas. Uh, or ideas uh, that come from our customers or potential customers because they ask our question uh, ask questions from us is it possible to do this or do that in that case we consider all these ideas and uh, most of the time those are good ideas we develop something on paper and uh, uh, but uh, we always uh, take the opinion or the knowledge or experience of the customer in, uh, in the development process. So whenever uh, there's a good idea, we take it seriously. Some of those ideas does, uh, okay, I don't have to read that. You don't have to read, I'll read them for you if it's necessary. Uh, yeah, some of the ideas for that yeah. they we're actually developing the, the product for our customers because I can have my own tricycle and that's it. If I'm happy with it, that's it. But uh, the customer has to be satisfied. If the customer doesn't like the product, then uh, he will not buy it, not use it, and we can close the shop. Absolutely. All right, Stefano wants to know, how popular are recumbents in Serbia or are you mainly selling abroad? That's a good question. I know you have your idea about that. Yeah, in Serbia, not so popular because of the pricing. Okay. And uh, here we go. Uh, what CAD software do you use? SolidWorks. SolidWorks. Okay. How about uh, Glenn wants to know, is your front end alignment any more problematic with the wishbone suspension over a rigid front end? Well, depends what uh, problematic means. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe complicated. So, if you want to, uh, if you want to align the front end of a, a trike with a rigid uh, cross member versus the wishbone that you have. Well, if, if you get it uh, as a rigid front end, then you can't adjust anything. So that's it. There, there's no adjustment on, on the rigid front end. Uh, we have a video on YouTube how to align, how to set up the front end of, of a wild one. So the whole process can be seen in a, I don't know, six, seven minutes video. Okay. So, well, we're going to have the link to your website, Dan. I, I'm sure your videos are all linked there. So we will have uh, refer them to that. And let's make this our last the question here. Kurt wants to know, what kind of brake uh, do you prefer on your trikes, drum or discs, and why? I personally prefer drums, but most of the people prefer disc brakes uh, because of the stopping power. Uh, it's modern to, to have uh, disc brakes in the front because mountain biking is all about disc brakes and uh, stopping power. But uh, the drum brakes uh, require no maintenance. They don't squeak. You don't have to change the pads. You can go 20 years on the same drum brakes without replacing anything. 
Right, right. Yeah, they're very robust. So, all right, let's um, let's finish up with your products and let's show folks what you are actually making today. And uh, uh, then we're going to bring Janet in to talk about uh, your marketing and uh, in in America as well. So, this is your website. It's a uh, uh, as I found out uh, just recently updated. Very nice looking. And uh, let's uh, Trey. Let's go to the first page. We have two pages of your products. Uh, Robert or Victor, you want to uh, go through your uh, products one by one and just basically tell us uh, what they are and what the differences are? Uh, well, we went through this and uh, Wild One Speedster is uh, uh, basically the small front wheeled uh, narrow track version of the Wild One. So it comes with 16 uh, or 18 inch wheels in the front and then 20, 20 inch wheel in the back. Uh, theoretically, it can be combined combined with a 26-inch wheel, but it doesn't make much sense if we put such a big wheel with the small wheels in front. Uh, the wild one is a, the standard 2020 uh, configuration, and the Roadster, which was called 2026 in the past, uh, it's primarily designed for faster going, lighter uh, touring or uh, traveling recreational tricycle. Okay, let's go to the next page. The Wild One 4x4, as I told you, mentioned earlier, is the new name for the FET, because maybe it's not politically correct to call a tricycle FET these days. So we decided not to call it FET because everyone calls their trikes FET. And since our tricycles are different, uh, I think that 4x4 four four says it all. Uh, the next uh, tricycle is uh, still in development, the Cobalt. It's a hand tricycle, uh, but uh, built primarily for off-road riding with 24-inch wheels in the front and 27 and a half inch in the back. Uh, it will be stand, uh, equipped as a standard with the Bafang mid-drive and the roll-off in the back. So uh, currently it's not available uh, for orders, but uh, we expect this year to be a, a promotion of the, of the tricycle and to finish, wrap things up. And of course, the Magnum Tandem, uh, our Tandem tricycle which is unsuspended. Very good. All right. So uh, let's uh, move along here. So we've talked briefly about your, uh, your, your trikes and the process of building them, and you market them um, worldwide, but uh, your focus has been on Europe. Uh, Germany, I know, is a big market, and uh, you talked about uh, um, uh, the, uh, the Spetses that you went to, and uh, Thomas Saida and all of that kind of marketing. But now you are pushing to market uh, more aggressively in the US. And uh, the person that you've decided to uh, partner with for that is coming up right now. Can we, Larry, bring Janet up? Hello, there is Janet Buckwalter. How are you, Janet? I'm doing good, Gary. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you. You were in Arizona, yes? I am. It's warm. After this little talk, I'm going to go out for a, I'd like to go for a trike ride. I cannot. I'm in a sling at the moment. So yes. I'm going for a walk. I'm going for a All walk. All right. Well, that's great. Janet, uh, if you can, would you tell us the story, uh, first of all, uh, a little bit of your background and uh, your your um, uh, association with, uh, with Green Speed, and mm -hmm. then uh, tell us how that uh, transitioned into your association with uh, Robert and Victor and, and Stein Trike. How did that come about? Well, about 12 years ago, I decided to go for just a little jaunt across country, rode my Green Speed from Atlantic Coast to the Pacific. And there at the Pacific Ocean, my hands were raised up in the air, both hands were at that time. And so many that the grease, the wheels in the water. And uh, Ian Sims over in Australia caught wind of this picture, of this old silver haired lady with his trike in the water. And he gave me a call and he said, I need that passion. You need to come and work for Greenspeed. 
So that was, um, I spent the next 10 years working with Ian. Every Friday we talked, we, we Skyped each other. And sometimes we'd just uh, share what we're reading. Sometimes we'd, um, we'd talk about trike innovation, talked about all kinds of stuff. And a lot of it was just brainstorming on what he was gonna do next. What am I gonna design next? That was always Ian, next, the innovator. And I was pushing for a full suspension trike. And his comment was, nah, I don't need to mess with full suspension because Robert Stein has already done it. Don't need to go there. That was my first introduction to Stein trikes. And so okay. here about a year. Go ahead. About no, a year, I'm sorry. About a year ago, um, I've, been, I've been a road rider forever. That's what I've done, run road bikes and then the trikes, like the pavement. But I was thinking there's probably something more. I had several friends here in town that do a lot of desert riding. They go out into the desert and the washes and the rocks and the ruts. And they yeah, think it's pretty some cool. Some of these pictures as Jana talks about this. Go ahead. Yeah. So I, I made my first order for a Stein Trikes wild one. I figured if I'm going to go on a dirt ride, I want it to be cushy. I want the best. So I remember what Ian had talked about with the Stein Trikes having the fullest suspension. So I ordered one, received it about nine months ago now. And it was beautiful. You know, we talked about these colors. I had the metallic bright green and blue. And the last thing I wanted was to get it all scratched and dirty. But I guess that's what you do with a dirt bike, trike. So I found a little dirt road. I mean, really, really smooth. Just a dirt road. And I'm, I'm, I'm a dirt rider. I'm a dirt rider. And, but I wasn't, you know, it was just, it was smooth. I didn't really need the suspension. So I take a look over to the left and there's a bunch of rocks and, and washes. And I'm thinking, no, can I really do that? I don't want to get my, my paint scratched up, you know. So so I carefully veer, veer off to the left here and try a few bumps, a few rocks, and I didn't feel very much. And then I work up my nerve and I go full speed down this big ditch. And I hit bottom and I just kind of bounce through it gently and come up the other side. And I was hooked instantly. I knew this is, this is what I want. This is where I want my trike future to be. I still do uh, road triking and enjoy that. But my passion is completely with the, the dirt rides. I love it. And so I've made a few videos, posted a few things. So now tell me how, the, how you got together with uh, Robert to begin to distribute this. What's the, what was that like? Robert contacted me. I had, this, uh, I had a text one morning on Messenger. Uh, Robert introducing himself. You know, glad you enjoy my trike. And it just blossomed from there. I just couldn't contain my excitement at telling him how much I love the trike and everybody, everyone's gonna try this, Robert. And uh, we, we just started talking about it. And within a few weeks, um, I was doing a bit more marketing on social media and it, it just it just grew, it just blossomed. I have trouble containing my passion for something that I love. Yeah, that's, that's pretty obvious. And I think that's exactly what Robert and anyone who wants to see these uh, marketed uh, uh, to see. So Jenna, tell us, uh, bring us up to date now with uh, what's going on with your distribution of Stein Trikes. Uh, do you have any? And, uh, and what are you are you going to distribute to uh, retail shops? Tell us what the prop what the uh, process looks like here in the U.S. Now. Well, I'm watching Larry Varney keeps on popping up here and saying, "Send me one, send me one." Well, Larry Varney, I want to bring you one. I want you to ride it because to ride them is to love them. Um, I'm building a dealer base right now, and so I'm contacting dealers throughout the U.S. Yet within two weeks, uh, I should have. Uh, I should have one of all the wild ones in my uh, distributor distributorship to send out to people. The fat, the 26 inch rear, the 20 inch rear and the narrow track. So I've got them in hand. So what I'm trying to do is uh, blanket the social media with uh, with fun, fun sells. And, and the so if there are uh, if there are bent dealers who are watching us right now or will watch this video afterwards, uh, what should they do? How should they get a hold of you? They should contact. I don't know if you have a. Uh, we have your website up right now, but uh, okay. do you want them to go there or your or your email? Let's try my email, which is uh, trike Stein, T R I K E S T E I N, because my little business is called Trikenstein. You know, kind of like Frankenstein. Trikenstein. So the email address is trikestein at gmail.com. Okay, and we will put that in the description below 
uh, too. All right, let's bring uh, Robert uh, and Victor up as well. Um, Robert, uh, are you excited to be working with Janet here in the U.S. now? Well, I'm way too excited for everything now. You know, uh, cameras. <laughs> okay. Well, great. Um, guys, I, I think we're going to – yeah, go ahead, Robert. I'm going to give you the last one. I was just going to say it's been great to having the chance to, to meet you and, and Victor and Marco and and to learn more about Steintrikes. Uh, we love what you've done uh, with the trikes and and how you've been able to show us uh, how you do it uh, here today. So I want to give you the the last word here, Robert. Tell us if you have some final thoughts about this. Yeah, these uh, tricycles that were shown in the workshop, the white one, the red one, the yellow one, these are going to Janet. Just an information. There you go, Janet. You get to see them. So, all right. Well, uh, Janet Buckwalder and Robert Stein and Victor, uh, Marco, I want to thank all of you so much for uh, getting together with us and showing everything there is to know about Stein Trike. We wish you all well. Happy New Year. And uh, we'll be in touch. We'll, we'll do an update with you at some point. So take care and thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys. <clears throat> we are going to move along now to uh, our next segment, which uh, is a short one, uh, with uh, Nina Paley doing her Bicycle of the Future segment. So, Larry, you want to do her intro for me, please? Yeah. Hey, that was really cool about the Steintrikes. I would love to review a Steintrike also. So please put me on that list. Uh, first up, I want to, yes, that's an Avatar 2000. Um, first up, I want to show the drawing that I drew. Whoops. Uh, this is First Amendment. And I drew this during the show while listening to the trike stories and occasionally taking breaks and looking at the pictures, which were fascinating. Uh, right, so uh, I have not done a whole lot on my Bicycle of the Future project. I did some other animation. I animated a Velonaut for Doug. Do we have that clip of the animated Velonaut? Yes, yes, okay, so I animated this and Doug will probably talk about it later, but I wanted to show it just to show I've done something. Uh, regarding animation. Um, what's the next image we have here? Where is it? You had the, the two. The, there the we go, yeah. I drew, the, I drew the recycled recumbent for A.D. Carson. That is a thing. Uh, what's the next picture we have here? Yes, and uh, I did this 67 mile ride partly because I was trying to hit 8,000 miles in 2020. And that was, you know, got, got me that much closer to it. And in fact, I succeeded by the very end. So I have a little song, which I will sing to you along with pictures from my 2020. <clears throat> that which didn't kill me made me stronger. So I rode my bike a little longer. 2020 came and went while I was on my recumbent. I rode 8,000 miles in a year. I had to cancel all my business travel. I stayed home while I watched the year unravel. The COVID canceled everything except my outdoor bicycling. I rode 8,000 miles in a year. In future years, I'll probably ride less. I should have better things to do and less. The world becomes a bigger mess, then I'll keep riding to excess. When I look back on this year, 2020, my hindsight will show that I rode a plenty. No matter what the New Year's bring, I hope we all keep pedaling. I rode 8,000 miles in a year. I rode 8,000 miles in a year. Here, here. And that, I'm afraid, is all I've got. You're there. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, the bike of the future project is, you know, sluggishly plodding through the winter like the rest of us. 
That's all right. Yeah, you'll keep us updated on that as you go. And thank you for spending a little time with us and for taking the time to write that up. Uh, that was wonderful. That was, uh, I think that sums it up pretty well for many of us, Nina. So, all right. Uh, we will hopefully see you next month and uh, we will move along now. Thanks, Nina. Bye. All right, guys, let's uh, thank our amazing sponsors for the Laid Back Bike Report, our, uh, including our new ones uh, for 2021, starting with an old favorite, TerraCycle. From fairings to headrests, whatever accessory you need, Pat and crew have you covered. And Trailside Trikes. If you find yourself in Florida, near the Withlacoochee Trail, or in Knoxville, Tennessee, check out Andrew's shop and his amazing crew. And Cruise Bike, their patented race and record-proven front-wheel drive geometry changes the rules of cycling. Now, comfort doesn't come at the cost of performance, but fair warning, your cheeks may hurt from smiling. And TerraTrike Green Speed Trikes, your vision, whatever it is, TerraTrike has a trike to take you there. And Green Speed. Cutting edge designs create performance through Aussie ingenuity. And our two new sponsors, including Laidback Cycles, the top USA dealer for TerraTrike and the premier source for Cat Trike, Ice, and Green Speed. We give you the freedom to ride. And Recumbent CycleCon. Please join us at the 2021 Recumbent CycleCon trade show and convention. It'll be held October 9th and 10th at the Montgomery County Fairgrounds in Dayton, Ohio. More info at RecumbentCycleCon.com. All right, guys. Let me tell you a little bit about what's coming up next month, February 7th at 4 p.m. Note the little bit later time uh, on the Layback Back Report. It will be our 2021 Velomobile update. We've got a lot going on with this show, I'm including... Uh, an interview with the first Chinese Velomobile dealer, a gentleman named Peter, who uh, I uh, am happy to bring to you. He's got lots of ambition and lots to uh, show you with what he's got in mind. And, of course, Doug will be joining us with uh, with uh, lots of uh, Velomobile updates as well. we got uh, plenty of things coming up. So tune in next month for the Velomobile show in February. Now, how can you support the Laid Back Bike Report? Well, you can like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and if you click the little I right up there, it'll go to your, it will go to our website, laidbackbikereport.com, and you can find lots more about us, uh, including our uh, podcast, by the way. We make uh, audio podcasts of each show, so you can find the listing of that there, among many other things. And thanks to all our Patreon patrons, as you see them here. Uh, if you'd like to become a Patreon patron, you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. We would really appreciate that. Also, uh, the little applause button, if you're on YouTube, you might want to hit that. You can send us a buck or two that way. So, all right, folks, we're going to finish up today with our tribute uh, to a wonderful bent rider uh, who has meant a lot to so many people, including uh, me, my wife, and many of us here on the show. Uh, on December 14th, uh, as many of you know, we, we lost uh, Jackie Schlitter to cancer. Um, she, of course, was a very treasured member of our bank community. The feeling was mutual. Uh, she had uh, so many wonderful things to say about the people uh, in the community and been a large part of it for many, many years. Now, uh, John has put something together on uh, January, I think it's 21st. Can we see that next shot, Trey? Um, we, the, uh, there's a drum circle on January 23rd, I'm sorry, uh, 4 p.m. till sunset uh, there in uh, Florida. Uh, celebration of life. Um, so you can see the details on this picture here. It is also posted on uh, John Schlitter's uh, Facebook. You can find out more about that there. So if you're in the area and wish to attend, that would be great. Um, so at this point, uh, I, I was thinking the best way to represent Jackie and my mind turned back to uh, the interview that I was privileged to do with John and Jackie uh, not long after we started the show back in 2015. 
where uh, she summed up uh, her feelings uh, a little bit about her history, but then her feelings about the bank community. I don't think we could do any better than that. So Larry, if you would, uh, let's let's play that video. And Jackie is with us today. She's also an accomplished endurance cyclist holding uh, several records of her own. Uh, Jackie rode uh, 516 miles with John and Sabrina in 2012 making Jackie the first female to ever ride over 500 miles in the 24-hour UMCA race. Uh, they also raced in, four, in a four-person mixed team race uh, in 2012 in the Race Across America. Uh, Jackie rode solo in the grueling 2014 Ram, a Race Across America. And though she didn't finish, she left it all on the road in a valued attempt, as uh, many of you know, follow her on that uh, on that ride. So, uh, can you tell us uh, where you're from originally? Where'd you grow up? I'm from England. Uh, moved here in the early '80s. Okay. So uh, 1982. Came here last year of high school and have been here ever since. And then, how did you meet John? Uh, our first meeting was at, uh, in 2009 at Ragbride, just kind of a fluke meeting. I had, uh, been doing Ragbride for several years on my road bike and, uh, had just a few months earlier picked up my first recumbent, which happened to be a Bichetta. Uh, but again, I didn't know John at the time and we just met on the road, a uh, very fast pace line went by me and I decided to jump on the back for a while. So uh, he then came to find me uh, that day or the next day at our campsite and uh, we had a few words. So that was our, our very first meeting. I uh, met Jackie in nine and we got married in 12, 12, 12, 2012. We loved the family atmosphere that we had at Bichetta, you know, that John had created. There was Team Bichetta, and there were people all over the country that would, you know, either talk online on Facebook or would uh, meet up at races or events. And that's what excited me about the whole recumbent world. It wasn't just that it was a great, fast, comfortable bike. It was this community. From there, we contacted, you know, lots of lots of our friends from Bichetta and from Cruise Bikes and from Meta Bikes and uh, Carvent and our trike friends. And um, we said, let's all get together. Let's all support each other. Let's get a new community going that, you know, encourages everybody, every every event rider uh, to support each other. Every bent rider to support each other, which is uh, really what we all like to do. Uh, Jackie exemplified that. Larry, if you could bring up uh, some of our crew members. Uh, I know there are a few of them that want to say a few words in remembrance and tribute uh, to Jackie. Let's uh, start with Danny. I know you actually uh, worked with her on races and stuff. T tell us, uh, what are your thoughts about uh, Jackie Schlitt? Well, she's a great lady. Uh, you can't say too much. You can't say anything bad about her at all. I mean, uh, a nurse, uh, caring, uh, funny, um, just a, a uh, somebody great to be around, but very focused and uh, one of the best crew people I've ever worked with. And I've worked with a lot of them. And uh, we were so fortunate to have her uh, with a, uh, Sandy Earl and Bill Spath on a two-person um, attempt on Ram, and uh, uh, Jackie worked the other shift, but still we got to spend some time. And and uh, we were the other thing too is my wife got to spend some time with her a couple of uh, years ago at their place down in in uh, uh, Spring Hill, and they bonded quite quickly because both are nurses and had just a, uh, uh, you know, great respect for each other. Uh, my wife was, uh, it was a very bad day when we heard about it. It very, very much was. So yeah. Yeah. that's, uh, that's Thank my you. thought. Thank you, Denny. Um, Trey, uh, Trey and his wife uh, accompanied uh, my wife and, and me as well uh, to Spring Hill. We visited a couple of years ago and had a wonderful visit with John and Jackie from which this picture you see comes. And uh, Trey, I know she uh, she had a lot of uh, 
She had a lot of effect on you and uh, and Lisa as well. Tell us a little bit about what you think uh, about this. Hmm. Well, let's go to the next person. I'll talk in a minute. Okay. All right, uh, Peter, <laughs> you can go ahead if you have if you're. Uh, are you unmuted, Peter? Can we? Yeah, we're not hearing Peter. Hey, is that better? There we go. Now we got you. Go oh, ahead, right. Peter. Could you give you give us your thoughts on Jackie? Well, I remember seeing Jackie at the shows, and she was always a, a live wire, a real friendly and upbeat, and always had that big smile, you know. And uh, I didn't get to know her very well, but she always seemed to have uh, a lot of people around when I was when I had a chance to get over to their booth. And I wish I'd gotten to know her better. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Who else? Doug, do you have something you want to say? Doug? Yeah, go ahead. I have to get this thing unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of Peter. I've you know, met her a couple of times at the shows and a couple of the events and things like that. She was always just full of life and, you know, a couple of, and didn't have a lot of conversations with her and, but, you know, there was, she was part of our community and, you know, a very special person at that. And, you know, like a lot of us, it, it, it hit hard and makes you realize how small and how frail this life and community is. Very good. All right. Um, Hansa, did you have something you wanted to say or not? It's okay. Uh, we're not, you got to unmute yourself, Hansa. <laughs> Well, I, I, I have met Jackie maybe once or twice, uh, once in Florida, once or twice during the shows. I'm not sure, but uh, as other mentioned, she was one of those always smiling persons. And uh, I respected her for all the achievements uh, she had done. And uh, so, yeah, I, I don't have more to, to say. That's fine. That's wonderful. Um, Nina, I don't know if you had a chance to ever meet Jackie. Do you have anything you might say? Okay. And uh, Trey has had a chance maybe to compose <laughs> himself a bit. Do you want to give it another try, pal? Yep, yep. She was a she was one in a million. She made us feel welcome. Even, uh, the first day we met her, she just, you know, you felt like you knew her your whole life. We had a chance to talk with her quite a bit, you know, during our visit down there. And I know my wife did. Uh, we loved her to death. That bright smile and ponytails, you know, that's usually what you only saw. <laughs> she smiled at you as she was passing you. So um, she had a competitive streak that I've not seen matched in many people. But when it was over with, you, you know, you're all friends. So uh, she'll be really missed. I really yeah. enjoyed meeting her. And our prayers and thoughts go out to uh, her family. Good job. Yep. And then the whole family. Okay. Thank you, Trey. All right. And then we're going to finish up there, folks. Uh, clearly, she had a great effect on uh, the entire recumbent community and the folks that uh, have talked today. So we wish John and the family, as Trey said, well, um, Jackie Schlitter will be missed. Please rest in peace. Goodbye, Jackie. <laughs>